worm tower video using 4 inch PVC pipe. PVC is a good material for this type of project. It's inexpensive, readily available, and easy to work with. However, PVC is not the most environmentally friendly. Thankfully, its negative environmental impact has more to do with the manufacturer of the PVC versus using it in our living spaces or gardens. But I respect the fact that some of you may not want to use PVC. In this case, wood is a great alternative option for creating a worm tower for your garden. It's also going to provide a more natural look amongst your veggies. So I'm going to show you how to build a worm tower using untreated wood. It will function just as well as its PVC counterpart, but it won't last quite as long. But that's okay. For this project, we'll be using 3 quarter inch pine and some pallet wood. Pine is good for this application because it's inexpensive. Pallet wood can be used just as long as it has the HT brand. This means it was heat treated to kill pests versus using chemicals. For the tower body, I'm using 5 and 3 eighths inch wide boards, about 2 feet long. For the lid, 1 inch and 2 inch wide boards from pallet wood and a 7 by 7 inch piece of scrap screen. Tools for the project, an impact driver with a screwdriver bit, a drill with a 1 inch forstener or spade bit. The size doesn't really matter. If you're going to use nails, you'll need a hammer, a handsaw or miter saw to cut to length, a measuring tape, sandpaper, pencil, and a box knife. Since we'll be using power tools, safety is an important factor here, so make sure you're wearing proper eye protection and gloves if you need it. Trevor, I am your father. Maybe this is overkill. I just ripped a three inch board in two with the thinner width narrow enough for my one and a half inch nails. These boards will be cut to length one inch longer than the width of the body. So my five and three eighths inch wide tower gets a six and three eighths inch wide lid. The overlap will allow for a rabbit to make the lid fit over the tower, preventing it from sliding off. The rabbit is cut on the table saw. If you don't have access to a table saw, or just want to keep it simple, make the lid the same width as the tower, and leave the rabbit off. You also need some fasteners for the job. I'm gonna use screws to put mine together, but you could also use nails, or you could even use dowels if you wanted this to not have any metal in it at all. I also use this as an opportunity to dig through my screw bin because it doesn't matter how these screws look and you could certainly find some screws laying around that'd be fine for this project. Now that all our pieces are cut we're going to assemble the main center portion of the worm tower. Of course for that we'll be using our four five inch boards and we're going to screw these together. All right, so if you're dealing with a thicker screw like that one was, well, maybe avoid thicker screws. You could also pre-drill these holes if you needed to, to, to avoid splitting the wood like that. And this section is going to go in the ground anyway, so it's not important that this actually be screwed together. Four is plenty to hold it together along this side. Sticking with the thinner screws now. All right, I think I've decided I'm going to leave the screws out of the bottom section altogether. Because this is where we're going to put our perforation to allow the worms to move in and out of the worm tower. Our soil level is going to come in right about here in the garden. So below this point is going to be basically held together by the soil. Not that we're talking about a lot of stress here. Alright, I've got a little pushback from one of these boards so that you can see it's kind of overlapping a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push that out as I put it together. But I'm going to use my nail gun just to lock that in place on both ends. Nailing this together would be perfectly acceptable as well. And then the last side. All right. 
All right, and here's the body of our worm tower. So we've got a hollow space through here. The next step is to add the perforations to the bottom. We're gonna bury this thing in the garden up to about here. So below that point, we wanna fill it with holes using our drill bits to allow the worms to move in and out. While they're doing that, they'll take castings out, take those nutrients out into the garden. When we pour water down through this, that water's gonna hit the, the, the bottom and then flow out into our garden. Our plants will be right here waiting for those nutrients that our worms have made for us from food scraps. That's pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna perforate the bottom about six inches of this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is mark where my screws go into the wood just so I can make sure to avoid, avoid those with the drill bit. I'm not exactly sure how deep they are. Now this one's longer. I'm just gonna try and stay out of the way of those spots as I drill. Actually, there's a couple nails here, but they'll be shorter. I'm actually using a Forstner bit for this job because I like how it removes the material. It's actually much more efficient than a spade bit. These are more expensive than spade bits, so the spade bit's gonna work just fine if you need to use it. Now, I'm also keeping in mind that I've got a three quarters of an inch of wood right there. So I'm gonna start in from the edge. All right, this is gonna be most of the work on this project, is uh, drilling these out. And then I'm gonna speed this whole thing up so we can get through this a little more quickly. The nice thing about using a untreated wood like this is that our wood shavings can actually go into our composter. So I'll clean these up with the leaf litter here on the ground and bring them along to the garden when I put the composter in. I'm gonna leave these two spots open because I've got my screw in there. My drill is getting really hot, so I'm actually gonna give it a rest here in the, the middle of this. Probably should have done it after two sides. I'm gonna take a quick break, let it cool down a little bit, and then start again. I'm gonna avoid this spot too, because I got that knot right there. I'll probably just stick a hole right here. All right, and that'll do it. This side isn't as pretty, but worms are a big fan of asymmetry, so they'll probably actually like this side compared to the others. Now that we've got all the holes drilled, I'm gonna just do a quick cleanup with some sandpaper. This is more cosmetic than anything. And if you're using a spade bit, you might have a little more roughness around the holes, so that may require a little more sanding. The Forstner bit is is a lot cleaner in how it cuts, so you'll end up with less sanding to do. All right, so we got a nice amount of perforation on our tower portion here. Enough that we're gonna get good percolation from water and allow the worms to move in and out as they like. All right, now that we've got our tower portion complete, let's build the lid. The reason we're making a lid for our worm tower is that all of my worm composters attract soldier flies and they can take over a worm bin. So since we're gonna have worms here in the tower, we want to minimize the ability for soldier flies to, to get in there and lay their eggs and then we have an infestation. Now, soldier fly larvae are an amazing composter and so if you want, you can leave the lid off your tower and make it a soldier fly tower. They're gonna come, they'll find it, 
And if you don't want to buy worms, letting soldier flies find your compostables is an excellent alternative. And they behave a little bit differently, but um, they're going to be a great composter for you. So that's an option too. So you wouldn't have to do this step in the project. All right, there's a soldier fly right there. They got a soldier fly bin over here, and so they're, they're nearby. All right, for our lid, we're going to use our two inch pieces, our one inch pieces, and our screen. If you're going to do this with a hammer and nails, you want to use finished nails for that. You don't want to split the edges of the wood. I'm going to cheat and use my nail gun. So we'll start out by making a box out of our two inch pieces. And I'm actually going to put the rough side of the wood up. I'm going to keep my clean side down. And if I have any bevel on the wood, just because of the nature of the pallet wood, I'm going to turn that in. Alright, and there's our box. Now we'll add the screen to the lid. Of course, I had a piece of scrap screen. I'm going to nail the uh, rabbited pieces on this way. But note, I'm going to overlap the the gap in the corner the other way so we can help this be a little more durable. Make sure that's lined up. One in the end. Right. Once you get to the opposite sides of the screen, make sure you stretch it a little bit so that it's tight. Don't stretch it too much that you're pulling wrinkles in it. Just a snug fit is all you need. The last step in our lid is to take our box cutter, our utility knife, and slice the screen down this side. If you hold out the end, kind of to give it, put a little pressure on it, tension on it, it'll cut more easily. And there's our lid. This is actually the top side. Um, and the screen will allow us to keep soldier flies out and any other insects that would be getting in there that we don't want in there. But it's also going to allow us to pour water down through the worm tower to spread those nutrients out into the garden. All right, now that we've got the lid done, let's assemble the worm tower. All right, now that we have our two parts completed, let me show you how they go together. So basically our rabbited edge lets the lid sit right on top of the tower portion and uh, we're not talking about a fit that's going to get moved a lot so it's going to stay on there just fine. A little loose but that's okay too. Alright so now that our worm tower is complete let's go put it in the garden and install some worms. All right, we're here at the garden bed and we're going to install our wooden worm tower. Notice that we have one of our PVC worm towers on the other side of the bed. So I'm basically going to install this one right here and then the two of them can filter nutrients from the worms out into both halves of this garden bed. So the first step is we're going to clear the mulch and create a hole. All right, now that our hole's dug, we're gonna check for depth. Another inch or two. Note that my holes are just below the top level of the soil, and that's exactly what I want. So now I'm gonna backfill around the worm tower with the sole that I've removed from the hole.
Once our hole's filled in, we're gonna pull the mulch back against the sides of the worm tower. Now that our worm tower is installed, let's add the bedding and the worms. For our bedding for this worm tower, we're gonna add some shredded newspaper. Note that I'm not using the shiny coupon section. These are coupons, but it's not without that shine. That shine would be a varnish. I'm gonna moisten this bedding with a little bit of rainwater since it's going in dry. An additional form of bedding I'm gonna use in this particular application is some of the shavings that we got from drilling out the sides of this pine. Since it's untreated wood, this can actually be used as bedding for the worms as well. I'm also gonna add some sand. That's gonna act as grit, which helps the worms to process the compostables. Lock that down with some water. And then finally, we're gonna add our composting worms. I've got about 150 worms to add to this tower. They're not happy with this sunlight. They're in some of the bedding that they've been in, in the starter bin I had them in, while they're waiting to be moved to the tower. So I'm just gonna drop that in as well, and then cover that with some more bedding. Just to get them used to the idea that that's home. And finish it off with some rainwater. Now that our worm tower is installed and worms are in, the bedding's in, this is where we add our compostables. I didn't actually bring any with me over here today, but I'll come back and add some later. Things to put in your worm tower are banana peels, any kind of vegetable scraps you have from the kitchen, coffee grounds can go in there, and just throw the filter in with them. You can also pull dead leaves from your garden and put them in as well. Our lid will go on and the screen will keep bugs out and allow us to add rainwater right through the screen. Whenever you add vegetable scraps, you want to make sure you add a layer of bedding over them. That's going to lock them in place. It's going to allow the worms to migrate up to that level in the worm tower and still be protected by that bedding. You should start to see worm castings kind of working up the sides. The worms are going to be active at night. That's when they're going to come up, walk around the sides, deposit some castings, and then they'll go back down during the day and start working on that food you put in the worm tower for them. Things you don't want to put in your worm tower are citrus, any meat or dairy products, or anything that's spicy for obvious reasons. Oils are also something that need to be left out. All those things make an environment that's conducive to things you don't want in here, like soldier flies. Let me know in the comments below if you've built this worm tower for your garden. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. Please like and share and subscribe for new DIY videos every Friday.